This is a game where I am playing against an AI that was built using a neural network. The thing about this AI though, is that the neural network only has a single neuron. Whereas I, as a genuine bona fide human, have over 20 neurons devoted to playing. Yet still I'm obviously losing. The objective of this game is to keep your rocket in the rainbow. If you stray from the rainbow, you take damage. If you take too much damage, your rocket explodes. Since the rocket is kind of large compared to the rainbow, the location that is actually being measured is pretty much in the middle of the rocket's window. This game only has one control. Pressing the spacebar makes the rocket boost, which gives it upwards velocity. However, the gravity on this desolate volcano planet is always acting to bring the rocket back down. I'm trying to time the thrust to ride the rainbow's curves up and down, but they're getting too small. And now I exploded. The AI wins this game. But that really isn't a surprise to me since I designed the game specifically for a neural network with only one neuron to play. Let's rewind a bit and see how that neural network works. I decided to make this AI after watching a tutorial by Tech with Tim. He made a neural network to play Flappy Bird. Tim was inspired to do that after watching the AI that Code Bullet made to play Flappy Bird. And Code Bullet was inspired by the Flappy Bird game itself. I assume that the Flappy Bird designers received divine inspiration. The thing is, Tech with Tim's thrilling tutorial used three neurons. Three neurons was too confusing for me. So I decided to make a game for a single neuron. This is a model of that single neuron in the AI's neural net. It takes a single number as an input and gives a single number as an output. If that output is greater than 0.5, the game makes a rocket booster fire. Otherwise it doesn't. The AI makes this decision for every frame in the game. So if we want to understand this inscrutably complex neural net, the questions are, what is the input and how does the neural network turn that into an output number? Well, the input is simple. It is the wavelength in nanometers of the color that the viewport is currently in. Visible light has a wavelength that goes from about 380 nanometers to about 750 nanometers. 380 is violet, 750 is red, and between that is our friendly Roy G. Biv rainbow. Luckily, I found a Python function to convert nanometers to RGB colors that Pygame could print to the screen. So the network gets the wavelength it is in at that moment. It could be anywhere from 380 to 750 if it is within the rainbow, and it will get zero if it is above the rainbow or 1000 if it is below the rainbow. The neural network has exactly three things it does with the input number to get an output. First, it multiplies the input by some connection weighting. Think of this as happening along the line between the nodes. Then, at the output node, it adds a bias value to that product. And finally, it runs that result through a function to get the output number. The connection weighting, the bias value, and the node function are all things that can be adjusted to make the neural network better. And making those adjustments is how computers learn. I'm using the neat Python package for this neural network. There are a couple dozen different node functions available. I picked the simplest one I could. There were several that would have worked. The node function I picked is soft plus. I configured the network so that all genomes would use a soft plus function, i.e. it couldn't mutate to something else. What soft plus is, is that the function basically outputs zero for negative numbers and then outputs the input number for positive numbers. For our purposes, that means we can basically pretend that the function doesn't exist and that all we have is the input multiplied by the connection value and added to the bias value. So all that's left to understand is the connection weight and the node bias. We get those by letting neat pick random values, see which rockets do the best, and then mutating the winners. Let's see that in action. Here we start with 15 rockets, each with their own genome. Nine of those rockets decide to never fire the boosters and crash into the unforgiving volcano. Two rockets decide to constantly fire the boosters until they get out of the rainbow. They unfortunately discover the lightning damage and are also quickly destroyed. That leaves four rockets that can at least ride the rainbow to an extent. Three of them do better than the fourth, which is already taking damage and also dies. The other three do pretty well for a while. However, the width of the rainbow is shrinking, so it is getting harder for them to keep the viewport in the zone. Eventually they start taking damage, which I've noticed tends to happen more following the curve down. At the end there will be a single rocket that did the best, but there really is no winning in this game. That winning rocket will also meet its exploding end eventually. While this is all happening, we keep an updated fitness score for each rocket based on how long they all survive. Neat uses that fitness score to know which genomes did well and which did poorly. It takes the best genomes and mutates them for a second generation. Let's look at those genomes before the next generation. We had 15 rockets, each with a connection weight and a bias. The equation is Connection weight times wavelength plus bias. If that is greater than 0.5, then boost. From this we can back out when each of the rockets boosted. 
These are the genomes from the nine rockets that crashed. We can see that even with the infrared wavelength of 1000 nanometers, none of them ever boosted. Some of them needed wavelengths that were greater than 1000, which would have been in the far infrared. Some of them had negative connection weights, and as a result would need negative wavelengths. I'm not a physicist, but I'm pretty sure that isn't possible. In any event, they crashed. Yes, they were always destined to die, but such is the cruel nature of evolution. We also have two rockets that always boosted, or at least until they hit zero wavelength. They would have gone into a wavelength of around 250 nanometers, which is ultraviolet. Thus, they left our rainbow and went into the danger zone and quickly died. That left us with four rockets that sometimes boosted, which is what we need. We have one that boosted on red, one yellow, one violet, and one marginally ultraviolet. It seems like higher wavelengths are better, provided they are less than 750, so that the rocket in question doesn't crash into the volcano. At this point, you're probably thinking, wait, your fancy one node neural network seems pretty much exactly like a simple if statement, and indeed it is, for this example. But now we can let that if statement mutate. Neat takes the best genomes and makes new ones. Truthfully, there are a lot of configuration settings, and I'm not sure exactly how they all work. But this is what happens in the second generation. We still get a lot of early deaths, but we also get some rockets to do well. Some of them have slightly different genomes. In this specific case, however, because we had elitism turned on, the best rocket was carried over from the previous generation and it is still the best. Neat takes that information and continues making more generations. I'm confident that the winner of the second generation isn't 100% optimal. I set Neat up to run three generations. However, generation three plays out nearly the same as generation two, so I'm not showing it. After three generations, I took the best AI and added a rocket that I could control to see how well the AI would do against me. I made my rocket black for style, with blue flames for extra power. Yet despite these advantages, I immediately take damage because the game starts and I didn't boost right away. So I'm down to 895 health compared to the AI's 1000. Luckily, I recovered before I crash into the ground. 895 is still enough health to compete. The AI and I both do pretty good for a while but I start taking additional damage first. And that damage continues to accumulate. While making this game, I notice that the, all of the AIs do well on the upslopes, but then take the damage on the downslopes. I had hoped that I could manage the downslopes better than the AI, but that does not turn out to be the case. However, at least I last long enough for the AI to take some damage. Unsurprisingly, my rocket explodes. The AI lasts for a little bit longer, and then it also dies. So that's a neural network as simple as it can be. Next time I'm planning to do the often spoken of but rarely seen two node neural network. So subscribe if you want to see it. Also, do you have a suggestion for other videos? Did you spot the errors in this video? Leave a comment and let me know. This is Dubious Insights. Thank you for watching.